Well, good morning and welcome on this beautiful Easter morning. Before we begin, we acknowledge that we meet on ground that has been cared for by the Jarraware and Gaibal people for many thousands of years. And we covenant to listen to their history and to live with respect for their elders, past, present and emerging. A special welcome to those who are with us for the first time today and a special welcome to those who are joining us in worship from home. This morning we have church in the round, which is church that um, uh, is activity based and, uh, and, and will be moving around. Easter Sunday is such a great day. And people all over the world are excited. But it's been a long journey to get here. The journey through Lent, where we have walked with Jesus and his friends from Galilee to Jerusalem. So before we leap into celebration... We're going to hear a bit about what that journey has been. And we're going to hear it from the perspective of a donkey. A donkey called Dave. Well, there he is up on the screen. Dave was so excited. He had been waiting all week for Grandpa Donkey to get back from Jerusalem because Dave had big news he'd been waiting to share with Grandpa. He ran out to Grandpa, calling out, Grandpa, Grandpa, guess what? I carried the king into Jerusalem. You're joking, said Grandpa. No, I really did. I carried the king, said Dave. I was just standing in a paddock, minding my own business, when the king's servant untied me and led me to the king. And then the king jumped on my back and we charged down the hill and up the mountain to Jerusalem. Whoa, I don't think I've ever galloped so hard and fast. And then the crowd waved palm branches and everybody was cheering. Everybody was saying, hooray for the king. Long live the king. He's come to save us. Ah, when it was all over. The king and I said goodbye, and I came home here so proud of being the one who carried the king to Jerusalem. And Grandpa, said Dave, you've been in Jerusalem since then. So tell me, what happened next? Did the crowd keep cheering for the king? Did they? Well, said Grandpa, the crowd were still making a noise, but they weren't cheering. They were yelling, yelling at the king. Oh, said Dave, but, but surely all the leaders of the city came to meet him, all the important people to welcome him to Jerusalem. Again, Grandpa sighed. Oh, well, yeah, the king, the king did get met by all the leaders, but they weren't very friendly. But Grandpa, said Dave, Surely they would have placed a golden crown on the king's head. Oh, said Grandpa, 
feeling even sadder. They certainly did put a crown on his head, but it wasn't made of gold. Dave still wasn't getting the message. He said, oh, but the throne, Grandpa, surely they led the king into the palace and sat him on the throne and cheered and said, long live the king. Grandpa almost started to cry. No, Dave, they didn't. There was no throne. They led the king out of Jerusalem. And they nailed him to a cross. Dave was stunned. He couldn't believe it. A cross. Oh, no. The king is dead. And then, Grandpa said something really amazing. He said... No, no, Dave, the king was dead. He was placed in a tomb and the tomb was sealed with a heavy stone. But something amazing happened. It happened this morning. The king is alive. The big stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. And already there are stories that the king is alive. Dave stared across the valley to Jerusalem. This was strange and wonderful news and hard to understand. He said, let me get this straight, Grandpa. The king was dead. But now he is alive. Oh, Grandpa. Can you remember back to when you were a young donkey and you carried someone special that you said you'd never forget? And Grandpa thought back over the years to when he was young and he said, Yes, as a matter of fact, I do remember. It was long ago on a starry night and I carried someone special that I'll never forget. And then Grandpa and Dave both raised their voices together and said, long live the king. Long live the king. As we say together, long live the king. Let's stand and celebrate.
Please be seated. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God of grace and power, we hear your promise to be alive in us. You live in us as we live in you. You are the Lord of the dance. And on this blessed Sunday, we rejoice in the risen power of love, hope and new life. Make this rising real in our own lives, we pray. Make us into people of love and hope and new love, new life. Make us into people of joy, we pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. The Easter candle is now lit. And we join together in our responsive words. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The risen Christ lives today. We are witnesses to these things. We sing praise to God incarnate. And may Christ's light burn within us. up when it was still dark because I couldn't sleep. I kept on thinking about what had happened on Friday and how we'd been unable to give Jesus a proper burial. I just couldn't wait to get up and tend to his poor broken body laid out with such terrible haste in Joseph's family tomb. And while I was waiting for the sun to come up, I gathered together some spices and some linen cloths and some water to wipe away the blood and dirt. And I managed to get some beads of myrrh in a little box. Myrrh smells so sweet it can cover the stink of death, though it will never take away my pain. Because nothing will ever hurt as much as how I hurt now. And no perfume can cover up the awful truth that Jesus is dead. 
I would have gone sooner to wash the body and to wrap it with cloth and spices because that's what every family does for their loved ones. But he died on the eve of the Sabbath and no one is allowed to work on the Sabbath. So I have been waiting for the Sabbath to be over. I'll be very quiet as I walk towards the tomb. I don't want to disturb anybody. And as I walk, I remember what it was like to watch Joseph taking down Jesus' dead body from the cross and placing him safely here just before the Sabbath started. My heart was breaking then, and it's breaking now. I'm nearly there. I guess I can be glad that the tomb is in such a lovely garden filled with palms and olive trees. Oh, without, Jesus, without Joseph's help, we could never have had such a beautiful burial. But oh, how am I going to lift that heavy stone that Joseph's men rolled across the mouth of the tomb? I didn't think of that before I got up. But what has happened? This stone has been moved. Who could have done this? <coughs> and all I can see are the cloths in which we wrapped him on Friday. Oh no, they've taken my Lord. Where have they put him? Are you looking for someone? Oh, please, if you've taken him, bring him back, please. Mary. I know your voice. No one else has ever said my name like that. Oh, it is you. There is no need to cling to me. I am with you. Soon I will come to you in a new way. Then I will always be part of you and you of me. Oh, I feel like a new person. I'm going to go and tell the others. I have seen the Lord and he is risen today. Let's stand and sing those words. Christ the Lord is risen today.
as brokers dance with the rising sun. So shall us mob at the rising of the sun. That which was by man destroyed by the power of God is restored. The covenants made in deserts lost spread so thin and weather tossed are carried high by the wedge tail now spread high and wide our sacred vow the rock is pride from a wombat hollow the women first the men to follow the blind at last that they may see Sep doubting Thomas, love set free. As custodians of sacred lands, 10,000 years at least and more. As we all on the wallaby ride, proclaiming wondrous hope-filled pride, cry corellas, cockatoos, magpies, Songbirds of praise, outback, arise. With Bushville chorus, we shall sing the resurrection of our King. We've been privileged today to have the contribution of two men of faith who have used their creativity and shared it with us. I think it's so important for all of us to have a sense of God with us in this place. And as Ross Brown made that beautiful video of two people walking through the bush and finding a stone rolled away, he was sharing with us his own sense of God in this place. And Paul, we thank you for sharing your gift of your beautiful poem. God, alive, risen and bringing new life to the land in which we live. We're going to sing again. Jesus is alive. This is where we say farewell to uh, the people who are watching from home. 
And so we pray a blessing upon you. Walk fat, walk forward now into the abundant life which is the creator God's will for you. May the gospel of Christ travel with you into every new day and the light of the spirit shine through you wherever you go. The peace and generosity of God rest upon you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.